Someone could go over there and sign a quilt square for you. Teresa Fitzgerald will be assembling those into a big anniversary quilt. So sometime today, make your way over and sign one per family. Uh, those quilts. Okay, I'm gonna sign one per family. Uh, okay. The band is sitting here, here, and here. That's why I have those filters. They told me they were just left to keep the table off. Oh, they can move down that way. I mean, the band is usually this. Because they want to watch their instruments. Oh, nice jersey. Thank you. How many do you need? Just four? All you need is four? Or do they want to sit right here? That's fine. Well, I need five. I'm going to oh, sit with them. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I'm just moving it one. Oh, Ben. 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 Oh, 
It took us 200 years, but we got here. It is great to see everyone here today. It is great, great, great. What a glorious day. We thank God for the beauty of creation all around us, for the beauty of your smiles and hugs for this great reunion. Whether you have been here uh, for a week or whether you have been here for 98 years or even more, uh, we welcome all of you, some of you even less than a week. We want to take the opportunity to welcome Decatur Street Beat here with us today. Let's put our hands together for that. In what is most assuredly uh, the, the perfect, the quintessential music for a day like this all the way around. I hope that uh, not just will you enjoy it, but that you will sense God's spirit moving through it. I uh, wanted to, as you find some seats and get organized, um, we, we want to uh, just point out to alter, the beautiful altar flowers today from the Ramey family. Uh, we want to also note that over at that table is a quilt signing uh, uh, table. We're putting together a 200th anniversary quilt. So you can go over there, one per family, sign your name at a square, and then that will later be assembled into a magnificent quilt that will be kept here uh, and displayed for many, many years to come. I didn't, in all the, the uh, hurry getting ready, I wondered as I make the, the final announcements here, if someone from that's doing the meals can come and give us some instruction for how that is going to work. Uh, so if you have been responsible for putting this meal on and can make your way up to the front, that would be very, very helpful. Um, we are going to have youth tonight at 5 o'clock, if you can make it. So, uh, or we're not having youth tonight? No, it was. We are not having youth tonight at 5 o'clock. <laughs> the looks that I just got from our youth volunteers, it's lucky I'm still standing and alive. Well, amen to that. I apologize for the heart trouble that I just caused them. Uh, wanted to let you know also that the church is open after the service, uh, after the meal. If you want to go and look at the sanctuary and roam around, you'll be welcome to. Uh, also today from 1.30 to 2 o'clock p.m. at the Person, Person County Museum of History, which is just catty corner to us over that way, from 1.30 to 2 p.m., there's an exhibit of Long Memorial's history in honor of our 200th anniversary. So you are welcome uh, to attend that. Mark the calendar because on uh, October the 16th from 4 to 7, that's just a few weeks away, we are having a, uh, a community celebration. So in the evening, we'll have food trucks and bounce houses and we'll have just as many people and a lot of young people and folks from the community to say thank you and welcome. And uh, we love being a part of this community. So that is October the 16th, Sunday night from four o'clock to seven o'clock. Uh, also wanted to let you know about a, a 200th anniversary pledge drive that we're doing. Um, and it is a, a $200 challenge fundraiser. The money for that will go to support the ministries of the church, including we're trying to put on a summer literacy camp next year, next summer, uh, a four to six week camp to take kids that are struggling with reading and help them catch up over the summer, kids from the public schools. So um, please consider being a part of that pledge drive. Um, one more thing before we get some, I think I saw someone that can help me with the, okay. One more thing, and that is uh, a new addition to our beautiful playground. Some of you have been back, are back from the first time. The last time you were here, that whole playground didn't exist. So welcome back to the church. But recently, we have had the installation of a set of chimes. Big, big chimes. The kids can bang on those. 
and uh, so today we're kind of commissioning those and uh, uh, blessing them. Those were given in memory of Tommy Day, Elmer Blaylock, Alton Thomas, and our preschool also contributed a big whopping portion of that. So uh, thank you, preschool, and may God bless the memory of those folks. So <laughs> may God bless all of the children that come uh, to this place. Jesus said, let the little children come to me. So, uh, Connie, would you, uh, well, first thank you to you and the kitchen crew for putting together uh, all of this wonderful food that we'll be having after. Uh, help us understand what we'll be doing a little bit later. And thank you to all of those who have volunteered to sling hash today. Uh, we have got two lines. We've got, and they're identical, uh, line A, line B, and they start at the outside and work in. We've got barbecue hot dogs, slaw, uh, baked beans, uh, roasted potatoes, and chips. And then there's, what, about three or four tables of desserts over there. So you'll start here you know, with the meats and work down, get your drink. If you want to get your dessert early on, and then come on back and sit, or if you want to eat, and then go back and get your dessert. So, And we've got four trash cans at the uh, four corners for you to use when you're finished. So thank you. Thank you, Connie. Thank you very, very much. Um, now, we had anticipated having some opening remarks from Alan Hicks, who has been the chairperson. He's our, our church council chairperson, but he's also chaired our 200th anniversary committee. Unfortunately, that little pandemic uh, uh, got him, and so he has to. He wasn't able to be here today. He's doing great and recovering fine, but out of precaution, uh, he's not here. But he did share some remarks, and I've asked uh, Mr. Tommy Humphreys to come and read Alan Hicks's remarks. Uh, there, it's, a, it's a fine tribute for this day, and then we will continue with our worship service. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. In 1822, in an area just north of here known as Cool Springs, a group of divinely inspired and spirit-led men and women founded the Methodist Church, which we now know today as Long Memorial United Methodist Church. In the generation since that time, countless individuals have been baptized and married, have spiritually matured, and have gone on to their reward as members of this church. Generations of families have grown and flourished on this very site. Those of us gathered here today stand on the shoulders of all those who have gone before us, and we are the beneficiaries of their wisdom, foresight, and faithfulness. Some of us continue to call Long Memorial our church home. Others have gone elsewhere. But without regard to where life takes us, we never leave this church. And so it is fitting that we gather here today to acknowledge and celebrate the fundamental reality. In the mid to late 1970s, there was a popular television sitcom starring Gabe Kaplan as a teacher returning to an inner city high school from which he had graduated. It also featured a cast of racially and ethnically diverse students, one of whom was an irrelevant but lovable young man named Vinny Barbarino played by then unknown actor, John Travolta. The show was called Welcome Back Cotter. The theme song from that series worked its way into popular culture of the day. And with apologies to John Sebastian, its lyrics were particularly appropriate for this occasion. Welcome back. Your dreams were your ticket out. Welcome back to that same old place that you laughed about. Well, the names have all changed since you hung around, but the dreams have remained and they're turned around. Who have thought that, who would have thought they led y'all? Here we are where we need y'all. Welcome back. Thank you. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you, Tommy. Thank you, Alan, as well. We miss you. We pray that you have a quick uh, and speedy recovery. With that, uh, we want to continue, uh, well, enter into a spirit of worship. One more time, I would say that this is the day that the Lord has made. 
Let us rejoice and be glad. Assume a posture of worship as we listen to our prelude. today and be with one another? Will you join me in our call to worship that you can find printed in your bulletin? Come, all who live in the shelter of the God Most High, gather together all who trust in God Almighty. God reigns through all generations. We will praise God as long as we live. We trust in God, our refuge and our fortress. We can count on God's faithfulness at all times. When we are threatened or afraid, we call to God for protection and rescue. Worship God, who richly provides us with all things. Give thanks to the one who dwells in light. God, who made heaven and earth, keeps faith forever. We will pour out our thankfulness in words and deeds. Will you join me in the spirit of prayer? Loving God, we know you by many names, but we are still part of one family, your family. May this homecoming be a recreation and experience of hospitality and hope. May all those who enter this home, may all who walk through these doors know and feel your love and presence. Keep all watch of our going out and coming in. No one is a stranger, all our guests. No one is an alien, all our friends. May the life celebrated here today give delight and honor and reverence to you. All of this we pray in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you are able for our opening hymn, which you can find printed in your bulletin insert. I'll fly away. So this is really important. If y'all don't sing loud enough, we're going to do this all over again. Uh-huh. So let's do it. Okay. <laughs> you gotta turn it off. Hello. 
All right, what I said was if you all don't sing loud enough this first time through, you got to do it again. So let's get it right the first time. Here we go. Peace be 
Excited for the fellowship to follow. <laughs> says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, take these deeds, both these sealed deeds of purchase and this open deed, and put them both in an earthenware jar, in order that they may last for a long time. For thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, houses and fields and, fields and vineyards shall again be bought in this land. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thank Thanks be to God. Come on up, gentlemen. Uh, right around here is pretty good. Watch that cord. They're not going to work with the band. <laughs> Chuck, can they move this way so I can actually do it? Get close enough so you can hear what I'm playing. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in, and then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It bathed my heart in love and wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus made me whole. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry. And he will answer by and by. When you feel a little prayer will turn in. And you know a little fire is burning. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Sometimes my path seems drear without a ray of cheer, and then a cloud of doubt may hide the light of day. The mists of sin may rise and hide the starry skies, and just a little talk with Jesus clears away. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him all about our troubles. He will hear our faintest cry, and he will answer by and by. A little prayer will turn in, and you know a little fire is burning. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right, makes it right. I may have doubts and fears, my eyes be filled with tears, but Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer, he knows my every care. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Let us tell him about our troubles. 
he will hear our faintest cry, and he will answer by and by. You feel a little prayer will turn in, and you know a little fire is burning. You will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. It makes it right. Well, we now. I'd like to say to the uh, teenagers that are present, this church is so old that that song would have been like on the top 10 list and all of you would have been sharing it on your wooden iPods and you would have been singing it and trying out and doing your dance moves and stuff like that. So uh, it's fantastic. And, uh, and I think you would have said that song was fire. That's what you would have said. If we could have the children come up now, and uh, maybe a couple close by parents, we're going to spread out some blankets for them for a children's message with uh, with our divinity student Lucy Birch. Come on up, kid. I invite children of any age to come up, or children of heart. Thank you. The most I'll take this opportunity just to plug for those of you that are back in town. If you count up all the kids that are in our care, I've gotten to 35 recently, and if you count up all the youth that are in our care, I'm right around 35 too. So praise God that a church that is 200 years old continues to equip and disciple the next generation. And Lucy, thank you for teaching them today with this special message. Hello, everybody. I'm going to get down here because I think it's important for us all to be on the same level, right? Hello, how are y'all doing today? Has anyone told you today that Jesus loves you? Yes? Who told you? Your mom and dad? Hey, how about anybody else? What? You've got to be kidding me. What about you guys out there? Has anybody told you today that Jesus loves you? Yeah. <laughs> They have? Well, I'm so glad. That's the whole point of church, is to tell each other that Jesus loves you. Well, Jesus does love you very much, and I'm so glad that y'all are here today. So today's church service is a little different. We're outside. We're going to have food afterwards. We got to hear a cool band. Oh, and me. <laughs> Y'all have no idea who I am. <laughs> I'm completely new. And you guys have no idea who I am. I bet you guys are wondering, who's that weirdo up there with pink hair? You're wondering that? Who is that weirdo up there? Who's this girl with pink hair? What in the world? <laughs> what is she doing here? There's so many new and different things today. Can I tell you guys a secret? A little secret? Yeah, sure. Uh -huh. I'm a little nervous. Did y'all hear that? I'm a little nervous. Yeah, I am a little nervous. I'm a little nervous because all of these new things I'm about to meet so many new people. I've been here all of what, two and a half weeks? Have you guys ever been the new kid at school? No, have any of y'all ever gone to a new school, started a new school? I have. You have? How did that feel? Was that scary? No. Well, I think you're special. <laughs> 
of y'all are nervous when you meet a new person or you're somewhere new or somewhere different. Yeah, you're nervous. It's scary. It can be scary to be in a new place because it's because it's different and it's something that we're not used to. Did you know that Jesus felt the same way? Yeah. You did? Well, you're already ahead of the game. <laughs> Jesus was a human, just like you and me. That means he got scared, he got hungry, tired, nervous, happy, and he even got angry. And the Bible says that Jesus with, is with us at all times. And there's nothing that we feel, so when we feel scared or nervous or tired, or happy, or angry, or even hungry. There's nothing that Jesus himself hasn't felt. And that makes me feel better. That makes me feel less scared. So it's okay when we run into new and different things. Because different does not mean bad. Different does not mean bad. When we encounter something new, it just means that there is more room for Jesus to be there and make sure everything is okay. And you know something else cool is church can be a place where new people can come to. And it's up to us as the church because church isn't that building right there. Church is us. Church is us, and it's up to us to make sure that those people aren't scared when they walk into somewhere new and different, and we get to be Jesus to them, just like Jesus loves us each and every day. So what do y'all think about that? What do y'all think about that? Amen. Amen. All right. Thank y'all for y'all's participation today. Y'all can go back and have a seat with your parents. This being outside reminds me of all of our year and a half, two years of COVID services. Anybody want to go back to outside services all the time? It got down to 19 degrees was our coldest one. We still had church. Back when I was a kid, we had to walk uphill both ways to church. <laughs> well, this day, this day, there are many to thank for their service. There's folks here that provided the tent and the table and the chairs, and we say thank you. There's folks that provided the food, and we say thank you. There's folks that provided the music, and we say thank you. Uh, folks that brought a neighbor or a family member who hasn't been in a while, we say thank you. And folks that said, what the heck, 200 years doesn't come every day. I think I'll go to church today. Thank you. There are folks here that showed up with a small child. And that small child is going to chase a butterfly or share with you a smile or say something cute. And there will be enough joy watching that child to get them to get a person through the next month or two, at least in terms of joy. Amen? Amen. Is that just me? That gets me through for months. And we're surrounded by a great cloud of witnesses. Some of those witnesses built stuff you can still press your hands against. But many, many more built things far more important. They taught children in kindergarten. They served as pallbearers for the faithfully departed. They offered their voices to God in song. They invited a neighbor to learn about God and sit alongside them, showing them the pages of the book in the hymnal. 
We have saints from the neighborhood, even now, who keep returning, I think, because there's a spirit of love here, something good that won't let them go. And that something is the peace of Christ, the love of God, which passes all understanding. And we say thanks be to God for that, because even though our sanctuary there on the hill is beautiful within the walls, it can't match the grandeur of this cathedral surrounded by <laughs> mighty oak trees or the majesty of the sky above or the bounty of the rain that waters this earth, the air that gives us life, the birds. Did you hear them when Lucy was giving the uh, children's message? that <laughs> sang and joined the choir. This week, I got a great call from someone that I had never spoken with before, John Featherston. He has fond memories of this place. He lives in Atlanta now and couldn't attend. Does anybody <laughs> remember John Featherston? I went, yeah, we've got some folks out there. Um, his father, Jack, is here. Jack, where are you? There you are. Hello, Jack. Everybody say hi, Jack. Hi, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> John, John's conversation with me was divinely inspired, I believe, and it was clear that John is a man of God, and he got to start right here learning about God. And he said something in our phone conversation to the effect of there being a pretty significant neighborhood in heaven filled up with the saints who have been blessed by this particular congregation over the centuries. That is our hope, but it also feels certain. And there are folks scattered in this place and scattered throughout our world who carry with them the fruit of faith that was planted here long ago. Anybody had any fruits of faith, any seeds of faith planted in this church over the years? Anybody? Like three of you? Four of you, maybe? <laughs> Come on, I need just to see a little hand waving. Amen. All right, ten of you. Well, then Jack shared a story with me that took place probably nearly a hundred years ago. He said, Granddaddy Press, that's Thomas Preston, he died the year Jack was born of a, in an auto accident. But our family still tells the story that long before his death, one day Granddaddy was in church here at Long Memorial. The preacher had talked until around 12.30. Granddaddy Press stood up, winding his pocket watch during the sermon, and told the preacher he thought the preacher had talked long enough. <laughs> well, the preacher said, I was about to end the sermon, but I'll stop now if Granddaddy thinks I should. Well, Granddaddy said, you should. So he stopped. But the reason he told the story was that shortly after the service, the preacher went home for lunch with Granddaddy Press. Think about that for a second. That story was shared. It's beautiful, I think, because it demonstrates, first, that an awaiting lunch is a powerful incentive for a preacher to wrap it up quick. <laughs> and I just have to say as an aside, I heard what they did there for that I'll Fly Away song. Did you notice that? He was going out slow, and all of a sudden it got faster. Don't think that you can make the preacher do the same thing. <laughs> Seriously, though, it highlights the way of being in Christ-like love that shows that you might not see things the same way, for example, the length of the sermon, but you can still break bread or barbecue together. Now, our scripture lesson this morning comes from the Old Testament prophetic book of Jeremiah, written a long time ago, and maybe you've never heard it before. It was written in a time of trouble. Two short verses. And I decided to spare you and Lucy the several hard to pronounce names and legal details found in the chapter. So we began later in the chapter. But had we began with the first verse of the chapter, we would have heard this. This is from God's holy word. This is the word that came to Jeremiah from the Lord. While the army of Babylon was besieging Jerusalem... And Jeremiah the prophet was confined in the courtyard of the guard in the royal palace of Judah. That too is the word of God for the people of God. Imagine being in Roxborough and an enemy army encircling the town, laying siege to it. And imagine that you're in prison because the king on the inside of the walls didn't like what you had to say. That's a pretty bad scenario. You're in jail, and the enemy is about to run over your city. Well, that's what it was like for Jeremiah. And it wasn't just like the enemy was far off. 
They would have cut off food and supplies, travel, calls for help. And the people of, in the town, within the walls, were scared and desperate, maybe even starving. Volleys of weapons from outside the city walls would have killed civilians as well as soldiers. There was trouble, and trouble was close. There was really no sign of hope in those circumstances. It seemed all was lost. And that's when God told Jeremiah to do something. God said the words that we read this morning. God said, Jeremiah, go buy some real estate here in Jerusalem and hold on to the deeds. Essentially, God was saying, I know you're in jail. I know the enemy army is about to overthrow your country, but it's time for you to invest in this real estate. Now, that's an odd thing for God to say, isn't it? At that time, especially. I'm no business person. I'm certainly not a realtor. I'm not sure, though, that the best time to buy is when an enemy is about to run over the remnant of your country or defeat you in war. For one, the enemy could care less about your deed. If the enemy wants to stay in your house, it's not your house anymore. But God said, buy it anyway. God was saying, this place, this place is a good place. This place is a godly place. In this place... Watch me. I will fulfill my promises. In this place you will dwell. It may not look like it right now, but I've got plans for this place. Houses and fields and vineyards shall again be bought in this land. Don't ever forget that. If you track the story of God's people in the Old Testament, you know what Paul Harvey, the radio personality, would have said is the rest of the story. It took a while before God's promise came true. God told Jeremiah to buy this place where he was. And Jeremiah bought it, but the siege, the enemy didn't immediately flee. The siege didn't instantly end. God's mighty thunder and lightning didn't crash down and kill all the enemy soldiers. In fact, the enemy carried the day. They overtook the city. They led God's people off in exile for two whole generations. They couldn't have cared less about Jeremiah's deeds. But God's people still tell the story, and we tell the story, and the kingdom of Babylon, the enemy, is no more. God's people have outlasted and overcome the evil that seemed to be so great in their midst. In the long arch of history, God's people returned, God's promises came to pass, it was a good place. Houses and fields and vineyards were bought again. And ultimately, the city of Jerusalem became the setting for much of Jesus' life and ministry, where he gave his life in return for our souls, where we, who are Gentiles by birth, were adopted into God's family. Friends, I don't want to make the explicit comparison that Roxborough is Jerusalem or our little corner of Main Street is like the temple of God in Jerusalem. But I do belong. But I do believe, along with Methodists in general and the United Methodist Church in particular, that Holy Scripture contains all things necessary to salvation. Wesley called on early Methodists to search the Scriptures, what we more commonly call studying the Bible. And that has been done here for 200 years. And in our reading and searching of Scripture, we learn the story of God. We learn that we can welcome newcomers and strangers when they come. We meet Jesus through whose life, death, and resurrection. Jesus, our Savior, Jesus, God, one, one with God. We receive the forgiveness of our sins. We encounter the Holy Spirit guiding us in our lives today. So in our study of this scripture, we discover that when all seemed lost for God's people, God told them not to give up hope to believe in, to invest in the well-being of the city, when evil was all around, when killing and anxiety and despair dominated the news, God instructed God's prophets, God's people, to double down on the truth that God is at work and on the move, that God's kingdom will ultimately come, and that God's good places are places where God's good will grow. So it is possible for us to understand how God worked in our world 2,500 years ago when Jeremiah was written, but also how God works in our world today in this place. When the enemy seems all around, 
God says to be of good courage because this trouble won't last always. When we can't see a way forward, God comes in with some outlandish creative way to get through. When we wring our hands, when we feel like throwing in the towel, God says not to give up on God because God isn't through with us yet. God has good plans for God's people in good places. And by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, I believe God has good plans for us. Now, in our 200 years, this church has not always gotten God's good message right. In fact, there have been times when we've gotten it wrong. Times we've let selfishness make our decisions, holding on to our treasure while others are in need of mercy. And we ask together, may God forgive us, for we humbly repent. There have been times when we've let fear or prejudice woo us into excluding others. May God forgive us, for we humbly repent. There have been times when we've wanted to protect our past and our pews at the expense of new generations of God's people and new movement of the Holy Spirit. May God forgive us, for we humbly repent. There have been times when we've gone with the latest new godless thing and chipped away at the bedrock of faith that has guided us. May God forgive us, for we humbly repent. The good news, friends, is that Christ died for us while we were yet sinners, which proves God's love toward us. We say it every month when we have communion. Our long history attests that God has continued doing good in spite of our shortcomings. God has continued to do good here in spite of petty differences over paint colors. I'm sure there was more than one argument in that building over paint colors. Anybody ever witness an argument over carpet color or paint color in the church? Anybody? Oh, we got a couple cautious hands out there. God has continued to do good here in spite of world wars that have claimed some of the children of this church. In spite of worldly excess and in spite of times of rationing and want, God has continued to do good here. In spite of disease and disability and multiple pandemics in the last 200 years, God has done good in this place. This is a good place because we serve a good God. God tells us this morning that this is a good place. Not because we have beautiful stained glass windows there at the top of the hill, but because God's love is invited to shine forth from here. This is a good place, not because we have beautiful classic architecture, although it is beautiful, but because we are built on God's forgiveness that is stronger than our sin. This is a good place, not because of the grandparents of some of us sitting here, but because of the continued striving to make room for new children of God who need shelter from the enemy siege, who need sustenance in an arid world. This is a good place in the end because God has called us together and we have responded to the invitation. Even today, we plant seeds of faith and faithfulness so that 200 years from now, God will inspire those who gather to celebrate what has been and press on into what will come, following God wherever God leads. Maybe by that time they'll have a dome over this whole field or something, so we won't need tents. <laughs> May we continue to enjoy the fruit of vineyards and the peace of godly homes. May God do that in this good place, because we continue to walk with God in this place. What's that? Oh, I see somebody with a pocket watch back there, so it must be time to quit. <laughs> may we walk with God together in this good place. And may we have eyes to see that wherever the people of God dwell, it is a good place. As later today we return to other places, near and far, may God bless those places to be good places too. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I invite you to stand as you are able and to reflect on the goodness of God as we sing the hymn, Amazing Grace.
sing. time the last verse to our time of prayer, you might notice that in the, uh, after the service order there in your bulletin, a list of prayer requests. Uh, some of these have joined us here today, and we keep praying for you, and so we're really glad to see you, and we continue to undergird you with prayers. I know um, I just got a text from Lois Winstead before the service. She's on our prayer list. She was unable to come, uh, and there's so many so many people. Uh, Alan, if you're watching, we miss you and we pray for a safe recovery for you. Um, but the names of those who are listed here are so precious to us. Uh, not just their names, the people. Uh, Sherry Deal has requested prayer. Uh, she's a former member of the congregation. Her husband, Doug, as well. But Sherry is battling an advanced, um, an advanced cancer in her body. So please keep Sherry in, in your prayers. I would ask, are there other prayer requests? And I'm going to do this to keep it from becoming a cackle. If there's somebody that, uh, over in this section, front, on this, in this tent, do you have any prayer requests here? God says you better speak up. Anyone? How about there in that section? How many of you in this whole tent have an unspoken prayer request? Lift up your hand. Lord, in your mercy. Your your prayers. Prayers. And over here, up close, any prayer requests that we would add? Yes. For the Woods and Clark family. For the Woods and Clark families. Lord, in your mercy. Your, your prayers. prayers. There was another, I think, perhaps. Yeah. Can we pray for the people who are evacuating Russia? For the people evacuating Russia. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Anyone else? Yes. The Horton family. For the Horton family, Lord, in your mercy, in yeah. our prayers. And I think I uh, join together with all who continue to live and keep tabs on this community that any that are contemplating violence would cease and stop, that peace would reign in their hearts, that the, the cruelty, uh, the senseless violence towards one another uh, would stop, that our community would be, uh, and God, we, we lift up uh, those who are victims. We pray that you would comfort and console them. God, we bind any forces within our world that would cause enmity between brothers and sisters, between neighbors, between strangers. God, we pray that you would provide, even through the church, provide connection and grace and love 
that we would all have enough, that the bounty of your creation would be shared willingly and joyfully, that we would all have enough. God, remove hearts of hate and callousness, break the chains of addiction wherever they exist, that people would find healing and hope. God, for those in our community who are battling chronic illness, for those that have received diagnoses that, are, that don't appear good, we pray for your health, for your sustaining, for your healing. God, for those who are lonely, we pray for companionship. For those struggling to find their way, we, find, we pray that you would be the light to them. For this church and its witness and its mission, we pray that you would undergird us, grant us courage, grant us wisdom to follow you wherever you would lead us. Grant us grace that we would forgive one another. And God, as we weave all of our prayers into one, we pray the prayer that Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we will receive the offering, and uh, we will be doing this by uh, passing a plate down one side of the table all the way from the front to the back and then turn around and pass it back up the other side. And uh, that's the way we're going to do it. If you are nearby and not near a table, feel free to jump in there and uh, offer that up as well. this beautiful day. 
for all of the, the wonderful smiling faces and reunions that have happened. We give you thanks for, for rekindled friendships. We give you thanks for your spirit speaking to each and every one of us. God, we pray that you would use the gifts that have been offered today to bless others, to lead us into deeper faith, to challenge us to walk with you through every valley and over every mountaintop. God, we thank you and we give you all the praise. And in our busy lives, God, we also give you a sacrifice of silence for just a few moments to hear the breeze and your creation. And all God's people said, Amen. I'm pretty sure everybody can't wait to sing this song in church. So let's uh, stand as you can, and let's take this service home with when the saints go marching in, because that's certainly what 200 years of a church should be about. There's two lines. It starts from the outside and go to the inside. And our youth wanted to come and bless the food. As they come, may you go in peace. May the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Okay, it's going to be a fun blessing because this is a fun day. Okay, so we learned some blessings at our youth camp that we went to over the summer. So we're going to be doing the Superman blessing, okay? So what you're going to do is, you're going to put one fist up, and you're going to say, thank you, Lord, for giving us food. And you're going to put the other one up and say, thank you, Lord, for giving us food. And you're going to go like this. You're going to go, and the daily bread, which we must be that. Thank you, Lord, for giving us food. Da -da -da -da. Okay? Does everyone got it? Okay, you want to try? Ready? Thank you, Lord, for giving us food. Thank you, Lord, for giving us food. And our daily bread, which we must be fed. Thank you, Lord, for giving us food. Da da da. Eat, enjoy, go in peace. God bless you. Thank you. So good, so, so good. 